welcome to Voice TV Nigeria. My name is Magdalene Palmer. I want you lovely subscribers to subscribe to our YouTube channel on YouTube by liking and subscribing to our channel. Now, thank you for joining me on this edition of the program. Not that so many blacks have been killed and nothing has been done to it, but the recent murder of George Floyd has brought a lot of controversial issues to the limelight. Africans, do you know that the main purpose of foreign policy in Africa is not to give education or basic amenities, but the sole purpose of reducing the population of Africa. Now the whites want to make sure that Africa does not develop. Wow, this is really sad because Canada and the United States of America invested over 60 billion US dollars on contraceptives just to depopulate Africa. Africans, we need to wake up. Seriously, we need to wake up. What this video and see for yourself. Because there is a, a policy of the American government. It's called the Kissinger Report, which was produced in the mid-70s when Henry Kissinger was, the, um, was involved with the government. And it explicitly states, which to this day, it remains the official policy of the American government. It has not changed. Mm -hmm. may not be implemented by mm -hmm. Trump, but it remains the same. That uh, the purpose of the foreign policy in Africa was to uh, reduce the, the population. So to give aid to countries in Africa, not uh, clean water and schooling and things like that, but uh, contraception and abortion. You know, to shrink the population of Africa because they have great mineral resources there. That sounds diabolical. It I mean, is, I, I, yes. That sounds like something conceived in the mind of Margaret Sanger. Yeah, definitely. And so the, uh, at the time, Kissinger and those involved with the Carter administration wanted to shrink the population, make sure that the Africans do not develop and do not use the resources for themselves because we in the States, we need them. There is a, a concerted effort of foreign powers to uh, control the population of Africa. Africa is a huge continent, could, mm. could feed thousands of more people, but the uh, policies of the West, especially in, in Europe. For example, between 1990 and the year 2000, the United States, Canada, and Europe contributed about $6 billion in contraceptives, not to help the people, not to give clean water, clean food, uh, that is, uh, not, not to fight malaria, for example. No, of course, perish the thought, never. Yeah. Let them die. That's the whole idea. So in our work in HLI, we denounce this reality to make the Africans aware that they have to defend themselves against the, the influence of foreign powers. A lot of whites have come out to stand and solicit for the blacks in America. Now, my question is, are the whites really scared of the blacks? During the war, the Americans dropped two atomic bombs on the Japanese, and the Japanese forgave the Americans. What have the blacks really done to the whites that is so unforgivable? Watch this video and decide for yourself. Now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, the main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says, there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine, unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again, he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing, he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? Can you talk a little bit about the trauma associated with The trauma associated with it? Yeah. One of the main traumas is 
It tells white people that they are superior because of the lack of melanin in their skin. And then they find out suddenly that we've got a black president. That's traumatic. That's where the trauma is. Living a lie, finding out the truth, is traumatic. Finding out now, recently, that within 30 years, white people will be in the numerical minority in this country is going to be traumatic. White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future. And they are. But if you want to get ready for the future, if you want to be treated well in the future, treat others well in the present. What we do in the present constructs the future. We called the Japanese, and you'll pardon me, but this is what we call them, slant-eyed little yellow mm -hmm. We didn't say that about the Germans. After the war, we rebuilt Germany and Japan, and we get along beautifully with the Japanese. That was in 1945 that we finally won that war. How, ma how many years ago was that? Figure that out quickly. I'm not a math person, but... You're not a math time. person, but you know it wasn't that far. Right. And it didn't take 50 years for us to, to have peace with the Japanese and the Germans, even though, even though we dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. The Japanese hadn't killed 10 million people. Nowhere near that. We didn't drop any bombs on Germany, any, any atomic bombs on Germany. They were a different kind of people. We couldn't afford to do that. We killed how many Japanese people with two atomic bombs? And they forgave us. You want to talk about forgiveness? You want to talk about changing this thing? I cannot understand how Japanese people can stand the sight of any of us, and yet they do. I cannot understand why black people who have been subjected to the ugliness that they've been subjected to in this country can get up every morning and go to work among us and not be absolutely furious. And I don't understand why we allow white people to behave the way they do. I don't understand that. And my third graders, after they'd gone through the exercise, couldn't understand it and wouldn't tolerate it. And when they went up to junior high and a junior high teacher used the N-word, one of my, my former students said, if you're going to use that word, I'm going to go out in the hall until you stop using it because we don't use that word in this school. That was a, sixth, a seventh grader who told his teacher off. When we have enough students who are willing to confront people who are making racist, sexist, ageist, homophobic statements, we're going to be better off. We have got to stop tolerating the intolerable. If it's intolerable for my black cousins, and every black person on this earth is one of my cousins, if it's intolerable for them, it's intolerable for me. I will not tolerate it. I will not tolerate it. That is not that. I am required not to tolerate that kind of treatment for the people who are related to me. And that's every person on the face of the earth. If your ignorance is such that you'll mistreat somebody because of your ignorance about the color of their skin, don't do it around me. Number one, I've been threatened with death lots of times. Now I say, go for it, fool. My husband died four years ago. Being with him would not be a bad thing for me. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Living a worthless, useless life is much worse than dying. Now, this is so interesting. A man in the United States have claimed that the Europeans came into Africa to exploit Africans' natural resources, all for the purpose of greed. He said America is built on greed, and the reason why most whites thrive in America is because they preach racism against themselves. He has come out openly to say that the so-called racism act should stop. Hey everybody, Dixon back. You know, about, what, 600 years ago, white supremacy wasn't really a thing. Um, 600 years ago, it was just there were human beings in the world. There were just people. Some from Africa, some from Europe, some from Asia. They're just people. And then the Europeans began to um, go exploring. They, 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 their ships were able to go all over the world. And so they got greedy as fuck. And they had the musket. And uh, 1455, the Roman Catholic Church made a law. And they, they split... Uh, they gave Portugal the right to the west coast of Africa, and they gave them the right to enslave Africans, to plunder them, to rape them, to rob them, and steal from anything they wanted from them. The Roman Catholic Church started the whole goddamn thing. And then, uh, of course, they gave Spain the right to go out into the New World, conquer, steal gold, land, 
whatever they want to do, rape, murder, and that's exactly what they did. And that's exactly, it started, you know, over 500 years ago. Today's 2020, and this is 1455, and the first um, ship, uh, 1526, the first uh, slave ship from Portugal landed in Brazil. And um, the whole goddamn thing began. And uh, that's how we got where we are. And so why did white supremacy start? To justify the greed. Portugal and all these European, France, England, the Netherlands, the Dutch, all these people, the Europeans, decided to proclaim that white people were superior and therefore had the right to imperialize, to colonize, to steal and enslave and rape and murder. And all these things were justified in the name of white superiority and that we can have dominance over all black and brown people by nature. And that was the myth and the lie that was started to justify the European greed and evil. And that shit's been running for 500 fucking years. And here we are now, 2020. And white people are still a bunch of fucking white supremacists. Not a goddamn thing has changed. The only thing that's changed is the technology. You can see racism now. I saw a video of um, 25 year old uh, Ahmad Aubrey being hunted down, tracked and lynched by three uh, racists. That was a mob, that was a lynching. And that's a felony lynching, which is against the law. Now it's against the law. It didn't used to be, the civil rights laws passed. There's something called felony lynching. It's a hate crime. And uh, anyhow, he was murdered. Uh, by the way, Maude Aubrey was a hell of a warrior. He fought for his life and he lost that day. But uh, his mom said, I hope his killers get the death penalty. And you know, I don't believe in the death penalty because our justice system is so fucked up. But in this case, let those motherfuckers fry. Because without accountability, without white accountability, without racist accountability, this shit will repeat itself. So there has to be accountability applied to all racists. And I mean all forms, the covert, the overt, the passive. And you know, the thing, white supremacy, and I've said this many times before, but here we are, and, and that's the whole thing about white supremacy, is it all comes down to greed. It's economics, and privilege, and dominance. That's what white people, that's what this nation, America, was built on. Was that this country was built exclusively for white people. And that's a fact. That always was. They don't say that. They didn't openly state it. But obviously it's true. And that's how white privilege works. A white person today in 2020 can go jogging down the fucking street. Can walk into a house in construction. And not be hunted down and fucking lynched in the fucking street. That shit doesn't fucking happen. A 12 year old boy, Tamir Rice playing with a little toy gun if that had been a white kid the cop would have said hey buddy what are you doing instead of race into a fucking park jump out of the car and execute a young child Emmett Till going back 40, 50, 60 years ago all he did was walk into a fucking store and the white lady lied and said he's harassing me lynched this is how white supremacy works and the other way white supremacy works, and what we're indoctrinated to do from, from birth, all of us, no matter who you are, if you are white, you are taught this shit, and you're taught it either directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously, you're taught it. And you're taught it by all kinds of different ways, all kinds of different messages, but it's taught. And there's all kinds of proof that it's taught. But we're taught to not give a fuck about our brothers and sisters that are black and brown. To not give a fuck about anybody outside of white. That's why that screaming silence you hear or that you don't hear from white folks when there's lynchings and when there's huge, crazy injustices happening. In 2015, black people were five times more likely, unarmed black people were five times more likely to die from being killed by the police than white people. Today, I think it's 2.5. That's crazy. 
they're being lynched. They're being, if they're not being lynched by the police, they're being lynched by right, white, Trump-loving, Christian, white motherfuckers. And by the way, it's always been Christians, white Christians, that's behind this shit. The Roman Catholic Church started the whole goddamn thing. Look it up, folks. They started the whole fucking thing. The indigenous genocide, the black holocaust, the Atlantic slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. It was a Roman Catholic Church supporting all that shit. And if you look at today, look at the, look at the, um, the, the, the people who killed Ahmaud Arbery, Christians, white Christians, they're racist. White Christians are largely racist and fucking hypocrites. White Jesus has been used to kill millions of people, indigenous people, and it's still going on today. And I'm not against Christianity. I'm against the way Christianity has been used. And I'm against white Jesus. White Jesus is a fucking lie. Even the Bible says Jesus wasn't fucking white. It's all fucking lie. So all you white Christians out there that are racist, fuck you, you fucking low down fucking hypocrite. Check yourself, check your fucking racism and all the other white people in the world that remain silent. You're complicit, you're guilty. The only reason racial injustice and white supremacy thrives is because of the collective silence of fucking white people. White people just like me, that look like me, that won't say a goddamn thing when horrible fucking things are happening to our brothers and sisters. Racial disparities in every fucking institution in our fucking nation, and not a goddamn one of you give a fuck. Not one of you. If you do give a fuck, send in the fucking comment if you're white. But the majority of you, you know you don't give a fuck. You know it to be true. I don't know, is it 95%? Is it 90? Is it 99%? I don't know. But it's a lot of you. You don't give a fuck. And it's that fucking silence that is consent. That is why innocent people are being fucking killed in the street. Check yourself, white America. Once again, check yourself. Check your fucking silence. Being not racist is not enough. You have to be anti-racist. Because if you're not, then your silence is getting innocent people killed. Yeah, you want your privilege. Yeah, you're worried about karma because of all the nasty shit we've done to black people. You know what we've done to black people, white America. You know goddamn well what we've done. And that's what you're fucking scared of. We've all been indoctrinated and taught as white people. White nationalism. Don't care about black people. Protect your own interests. When I was a little boy, I was told to lock the fucking doors every time we went through the goddamn black neighborhood. All that shit was taught to us. Everybody. What we have done to black people is dirty. And it's still happening. And you still don't care. So once again, white people. Check yourself morally. Grow some moral courage racially. Start doing what's right. Don't remain silent. Speak up about it. You know, make phone calls. Support people like Sean King, who's who's making a movement, who's getting justice for people like Ahmaud Aubrey. Him and his amazing crew and his team, support him. Help him. Do something to support justice for, for the things that are wrong. Things are not fair in America, and they never have been. We are a largely racist nation. Stop the fucking silence. Stop the fucking denial. Stop the fucking projection. Nobody lives in a black supremacy. Thank you for watching this edition of this program on Voice TV Nigeria. I want you to like and subscribe and keep viewing for more in of these interesting videos to come up next time. Like and subscribe. I am still Magdalene Palmer. Bye.